Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Hello everyone, my name is Umar Khan and the topic of our today's video is linear regression implementation. In this video we will see that how exactly can we implement linear regression using only the very basic libraries of uh, Python like NumPy, Matplot library and stuff like that. In this video, we will see linear regression in action and we will solve a very interesting problem where in the data set we would have the population of certain cities and the profit we would get if we were to start a new business in there. And then using linear regression, we would like to predict that in which city or in which country, depending upon its population, we should start our new business so that we may have the maximum profit. So without further ado, let's get started. The very first thing that we need to discuss is the data that we are going to use for this video and for the example that we are going to implement in this video. The data that we are using is a comma delimited text file and in that text file we would have two columns. First column would be of the population of the cities and the second column would have the values of profit with respect to the population given in the first column. Now after we have import, imported this data in our program, we would like to pre-process it. That is, we would like to make sure, we would like to ensure that the shapes of x and y variables are correct. Apart from that, we would like to get the value of m. And we would like to add ones with the input, that is with x, because they would be treated as the coefficient of theta 0. And then, whenever we are dealing with machine learning tasks, after we have pre-processed the data, it is very useful and very important that we visualize our data. So let us open, so let us open our Jupyter Notebook and see all of this stuff in action. The very first thing that we would like to do in our program is to import the relevant libraries, that is NumPy and Matplot library. And from Matplot library, we are importing the PyPlot. So, we type these commands and press shift enter and run this cell. After the cell has completed its execution, we can start importing our data and then pre-process it. To import the data and pre-process it, we use numpy and to visualize it, we use the pyplot. And we write the following code in the next cell. The very first command is only importing the data. So numpy.loadText imports the data from this file. And we also have to define the delimiter, which is specified in the presentation slides earlier in this video that this is a comma delimited file. So that's why we define the delimiter to be a comma. After that, we specified in our video that the data set contain in its first column the population of the cities, which will be treated as the input attribute. So, we save that in x. Then, the second column is the output value, that is the profit. So, we save that in y. Then, we get the value of m, that is the total number of examples. After that, we create a numpy array of m by 2, that is the total number of examples by 2. It would have two columns. And on the second column, we would append the original small x, which contains the population. So now, in the capital X, we would have the first column of all ones, and the second column would have the population of the cities. So these are the two commands that are doing that. After that, we make sure that the shape of the y is as per our desire, that is m by 1. Also, to make sure that the shapes of x and y are as per our desire, we print them. After that, we plot or visualize our data using a scatter plot. In the scatter plot, the first thing we do is write the x value or the value that we want to be on the x-axis of the plot. Then we write the value that we want to be on the y-axis of the plot. And we give here x and y. Note that we are not on the x-axis variable writing the capital X, we are writing the small x. Because while plotting, we don't need the extra column with all ones. We only need the column with all ones when we are computing the hypothesis, where it will be treated as the coefficient of theta zero. 
Now as we run this cell, as we run this cell, we get the following output. We get the shapes of x and y. Then we get the plot of the data. On the x-axis, you can see that we have the population in 10,000 and we have the profit in $10,000. And this is the data that we want to model. That is, using linear regression, we want to fit the best line through this model so that we can use that for future predictions. After pre-processing the data and visualizing it, the next thing that we would like to do is we would like to create a function that would be able to compute the cost. So. As you would remember, the cost is given by this equation. And h theta of x in this equation is given by this theta 0 plus theta 1x. Note that this h theta of x can be written in the vectorized form as the dot product of theta and x, which will simply result in this equation again. So let's go back to our Jupyter notebook and implement this part. We simply create a function with the name compute cost and pass it the variables x, y, and theta. Now we compute the predictions. The predictions variable here basically contains the value of h theta of x, which, as we just discussed, is equal to the dot product of x and theta. So we take the x and the dot product of theta. Then we compute the cost, which is given by first taking the difference between the predictions and y that is h theta of x minus y then squaring the answer then we sum the answer and divide it by 2m and we return this value so all we have done in this function is computed or calculated the value of the cost function given the value of x y and theta where x y are the input and the output variables respectively and theta are the randomly initialized parameters first we will find the cost using randomly initialized parameters then using gradient descent we will try and find the optimum parameters so let us run this cell we run the cell and then we randomly initialize theta as an array of 2 by 1 dimensions which is initialized as all zeros. After we have initialized this, we pass to this function x, y and theta. We do that using by calling this function compute cost and passing it our capital X, y and theta variable. We run this and we see that we have a cost of 32.07. Now, at this point, our goal is to minimize this cost and we do that by updating our theta parameters. And how do we do that? We do that using the gradient descent algorithm. So let us write the code for that. The gradient descent algorithm contains the following equation. That is, we update our parameters by subtracting from its original value a product of alpha and the partial derivative of the cost where the partial derivative of cost is given by this equation so let us implement these two equations in Jupyter notebook for gradient descent we create another function named as gradient descent and to that gradient descent we pass the values of x as our input features y as the target variable theta alpha and the number of iterations here alpha is the learning rate and number of iterations is basically the number of times we want to perform the gradient descent and update our parameters. Then we create a for loop that is supposed to run as many times as the number of iterations. So for example we had 1500 iterations then this loop would run 1500 times. And in that loop first of all we find the x which is given by the dot product of x and theta. Then we compute the error, which is given by the predictions minus y dot product with the x transpose. This error basically contains the value of the derivative of the cost function. As you can clearly see in this slide, that the gradient, the partial derivative of the cost function is simply equal to the h, the value of h minus the value of y, then dot product with the value of x. So we have computed that. After that we make another variable named m and we multiply the value of error with 1 over m and with alpha. Then using gradient descent we subtract 
from the original value of theta this value of descent. After we have done that, at this point we have successfully updated our parameters or the value of theta. Then, for the updated value of theta, we compute the cost because we would like to know that what is the cost after we have updated our parameters. And we do that by calling the compute cost functions we created above. And to that, we pass the updated value of theta and the same value of x and y. And for visualization purposes, we would like to see that as we update our parameters, how does the cost performs? That is, we would like to visually see that how the cost decreases as the parameters get updated. For that, we create an array. For that, we create an array to which we append the value of cost computed after each update. And then in the next or the next after that cell, we can visualize it by plotting the value of J history. So let us run this cell. As this cell is only the definition of the function and the function is not being called yet, we haven't seen any output. So in the next cell, we call this function. To call this function, we pass it our x or the input feature vector, y, the output feature vector, the value of theta that was randomly initialized. We pass a learning rate of 0 0.01 and we say that the total number of iterations are set to 1500. So let us run this. As we run this, we have the output stored in theta and j history. Now let us see about these values. We will plot the value of j history and we will see that how the plot decreases. That would show that the value of cost decreases with each update. To do that, we simply use the command of plt.plot and the name of the variable that we want to plot. Then we type the command of plt.show. We run this cell and you can see that in the graph, the value of the cost decreases with the number of iterations on the x-axis. At this point, we would also like to know the optimized value of our parameter, so we print the value of theta. We run this cell and here we can see the optimized, found the optimized value of theta or the best value of theta that would give us the minimum loss. Now all that is remaining is the final visualization and the prediction part. For the final visualization, we want that on this data set, the best fit line must be shown so that we can visualize it. For that, we create another scatter plot of x and y that would give us a plot like this where we would have points shown with small circles. Now on that plot, we would like a line that would be best fitting for our data set. For that, we create the line using the equation of our hypothesis that is theta 0 plus theta 1 times x where x or the variable y here is just a random number or numbers between 0 and 24 or 1 to 25 then we use the command of plt.plot and then plt.show after we run this cell you can see the best fit line passing through our data set for predictions we can simply create a function named predict which would receive the value of input features for which the output we want to predict and the optimum value of theta. So, and the output would be predicted as the dot product of the input multiplied by the optimum found theta. And then we return the value. So we run this cell and let us say we want to predict the value of some input, input features where the value of population is 3.5 or in terms of 10,000s. So the value would be actually 35,000. So what we simply do is to predict we pass an array as input and then we pass theta. Then we run this command and we get that if the population would be this then we would get a profit of this. So we have also visualized and predicted the output for some new inputs. And in this video we saw linear regression in action. We saw that how can we implement linear regression and use it to solve a problem of population and the respective profits. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.